if you were to run into the back of me on um, on Catawba Avenue, Jared, who would get the ticket? Did you? That's not a good argument. It is. Did you hit the brakes? Did you like brake check me or something? Get off my <laughs> Stop tailgating. So you instigated it. No, I'm saying that I Chase is racing. I'm supposed to be Chase in is right? racing. The following is a production of Dirty Mo Media. Hey guys, welcome to Actions Detrimental Post Atlanta Monday morning. Uh, we stayed up late, late tonight to do this uh, for you guys. I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty beat, pretty tired, but uh, we saw a great finish. So we had to get uh, get here, get some live reaction from uh, what we just saw. We just landed. 45 minutes ago, not long ago, so um, fresh off of it. Um, before we get into the other races, what's your first reaction? To the race? Yeah. I thought it was very exciting. That's what everyone says. Yep. From the bit I saw on, on TV, I thought it was a very exciting, action-packed race. The entire race, just you're saying like all the lead changes, all that stuff, it was... Yeah. and You were also, entertained. Yeah, I mean, we'll get into... Yeah, we'll get into more specifics, but I also thought it was interesting that some of these crashes, these wrecks, didn't necessarily take guys out of the race. All right. Yeah. I, you know, certainly if anyone has a negative feeling about it, it probably should be me, but I, you know, I, I've watched enough of the highlights. I've seen some of the wrecks uh, firsthand. <laughs> I just. Uh, it was exciting. I mean, even when I was up front for the most, most part of the day, um, we were in the top 10 pretty much all day. Anytime we were running, um, it was, there was dicing going on. It was, uh, cars dicing and slicing, getting the lead and then sliding each other up and, uh, to the next lane and self clearing each other. It was, um, a lot of stuff going on for sure. I got a question for you. You're talking about all the cars that were stayed in the race, even though they were involved in wrecks. Is that a good or a bad thing? Like, obviously, you want to stay in it, but like the amount of beating that you take compared to what it would have been in the previous car, though. Yeah, it's interesting because the bodies of these cars are way more durable. So you'll see guys get taken out of the race or uh, go laps down, and you'll look at the body of the car, and it will be little to no damage because it just pops in pops out this composite material does that where the steel body cars that we used to run it it would mess up the body the suspension would be more rigid for sure so that wheels can take more contact but the body couldn't so you would have a whole lot more damage to the body um it's it's tough to say what's i think the amount of carnage is about the same because i think what took you out before you know, the wheel damage that we had now that takes you out because you knock a toe link or you bend a suspension part, um, that that takes you out. Versus before, you were knocking off fenders and your car was just destroyed and you couldn't keep up from an aerodynamic reason. So so it's just, it's it's you took away from one, added to the other. If the suspension was actually a little bit more rigid, you would see, I mean... I'd be afraid to do that because I think the drivers would know that and just be even more aggressive. So I, I think it's uh, we're in a, probably in a good place there as far as you know durability versus you know you, you can't take but so much uh, hit. Yeah, it's like hit or miss, right? Like you drive in the back of Chris Busher and it looks like your car is perfectly fine, but then someone just like taps the wall with their rear or something, and the whole back end is knocked out of line it's like well what do you mean how did how do you how are you still in the race when you drove into a guy but this guy who just dinged the wall is it just done you know it's yeah tough it's, to, i i look back at the uh 2021 daytona 500 and what took me out all i took was a hit to the wheel the body never even got a scratch on it but back then we didn't replace tow links like right. I didn't know that. what that word was until right <laughs> next it basically car. keeps the the tire going straight so you have a suspension part, but the tow link is just like almost like a little tie rod. It's but it's very very small, and it's got um, you know two joints on the end of it, and it just it bends and breaks really easily. And they've actually come up with a more durable one that that the teams you know because at the very beginning these things would snap. You barely touched anyone, they'd break, um, and then they created a more durable one. But it you know everyone runs the most durable ones that we have now. 
Yeah, certainly a the, like the buzzword since next gen car. I remember when yeah, they totally, link, totally, link, totally. Link. Am I supposed to know what that means? Totally, link, totally. Link? <laughs> yeah. I guess so. so Atlanta, it was a perfect weekend. No weather, no no problems. We had sunshine. We had a good crowd. Uh, let's start with Saturday. We had Kyle Busch winning the truck race, and the Xfinity winner Austin Hill. Shocking. It it was shocking when you watched the race because it wasn't like he was just stone cold dominant like at other right, tracks where right. he's leading all the laps and these guys just can't figure out how to get a run going. Um, these guys still couldn't figure out how to get a run <laughs> going. They they still could not figure it out. I mean, I look back and like one year ago during the Xfinity race, I think I tweeted one year ago. I said, um, "Hey Xfinity guys, if you're running tenth with five to go." You can't win from there. You might want to start poking out of the line and forming something. And you watch, it was deja vu. Everyone just rode around the line again. And it's like, you know, I, I guess, I don't know how many cars were in that lead pack, but I mean, maybe 10, 12. It's like, if you're sixth, the reward is winning versus if at the worst, you're going to finish 10th or 12th. Like, what are you doing? Like, these guys. They definitely, you would think as much as they've seen the cup guys like generate runs and stuff. Again, and the cup guys are there for a reason. And these guys are all figuring it out. But, you know, I think that's uh, that's why you see that there's just haves and have nots on, you know, figuring out drafting in the Xfinity series. And as some of these guys either age out or they go up to the cup series, it, it brings in new, younger, uh, inexperienced guys. And then you see kind of a freight train type race that you saw. Is it a skill thing? Is it difficult to save fuel? No, it's not difficult to save fuel. It's difficult to save fuel and keep your position. So it's knowing when to save fuel. And so what will happen is the drivers will likely, if they're in a pack or, or they're drafting, they'll just roll out to the throttle, let's just say 60, 70, 50% or so. And the car won't just slow way down because you're in a draft the car in front of you and the car behind you is kind of keeping you in that line running the same speed even though you're not running 100 percent throttle so um it's not really that difficult but um it is if you're up front for sure and they're up front as in leading the race or second mm, third i say second third through seventh right because everyone's trying to get up in the top five so Saving gas and staying in the top five, that's probably takes a little bit more skill. For right. sure. This is what we saw in the Xfinity race. I believe Jesse Love leading the majority of the race. And right. when I say majority, I mean the majority. <laughs> yes, yes. You he were thought right. He was he was good on on gas. He thought he had saved enough. I, I saw someone's comments on that because they asked him, they said, How much have you saved? He says, I saved enough. <laughs> <laughs> and they said and someone says, well, how does he know? This is the <laughs> second Xfinity race. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of funny that uh, when they asked him, well, how much did you save? Enough. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to stay out. Um, That's why I'm asking, like, is, is it a skill thing that yeah. the more experience you have driving a certain car, you get better at knowing when you actually did save enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, the miles per gallon that you ga uh, gained depending on how much throttle you're applying. It's different for every car. It's different uh, for the situation that you're in. Um, yeah, the easiest place to save gas is at the back of a super speedway draft, Atlanta draft, uh, because you don't risk losing the draft, but you, you can run 50% of throttle or less and keep up with the pack because the wake that they're putting off is so big. So, um yeah, I watched the end of the Xfinity race, and it definitely sucks for Jesse Love. He's dominated uh, the, the last two weeks, but uh, Austin Hill has stolen the win. He didn't. Austin Hill didn't steal Daytona as much as definitely this one for sure. Um, but yeah, it was. I was worried on that restart, like all those cars that didn't pit. I'm like, I mean, surely someone's car is not going to go, and we're going to have just a huge pile up <laughs> down the front stretch, and. They didn't. They did actually a great job. Everyone who noticed that they were out of gas pulled over really, really and no quickly. No one stopped on the track. And yeah, and so they kept it going. And so uh, I kept thinking for sure that man, there's no one that's going to make it. But 
Austin Hill and those guys were just far enough in the pack, just kind of laying in the weeds. You know, listen, they wanted it. If the race goes green, they don't win that race for sure. But it, the fortune worked out for them when they got that caution. Next thing you know, everyone in front of you starts running out. Boom. You saved them uh, enough gas during that run to uh, to make it to the end and win the race. Did you see the convertible in the truck race? I did. <laughs> At first, I my first reaction was, what the hell is that? Are they trying to cheat the front windshield? Because we've seen, um, I think it was the 38 truck, the front row truck of Zane Smith last year with his front windshield. Uh, maybe it the was 41 truck last year the 38 truck i think it at homestead he his front windshield was oh. all buckled in okay you're gotcha. and, and you know there was probably some shenanigans going on or i think there was i think someone got dq'd I, I hate to pin it on him but i think it was a 38 truck and so i looked at it i'm like oh boy these boys are cheating the front windshield so they just what what they're doing on the heavy downforce tracks is they'll They'll make the brackets that hold the windshield come loose, or they'll make them really, really thin. And what that does is when the air hits the front windshield of a truck or a car, it causes it to bow or buckle. Wasn't this a Harvick thing on the four car? This was for your, it was the 38 truck last year. Ah, okay. Good memory. Um, Yes, but it was the rear glass. Oh, okay. But then, no, hold on. But there was another time. (laughs) It was Harvick's front windshield during uh, Talladega. Like the bolts. Talladega, loose, right? Talladega playoff race. Remember, he had the the bolts coming out. Yeah. They came loose, all of them, <laughs> in the front windshield at Talladega. Uh, so, am, am I right there, Travis? Yep, you got that one right, too. All right, all right. Uh, I always remember when people do a little shady stuff. Um, so I get back on track here. The truck, the 41 truck, I saw his front windshield buckled in. I'm like, Oh, these boys are cheating the front windshields. They're, you know, it was all over social media. Dale jr. And many others were commenting on it. Um, and, <laughs> and next thing you know, this thing turns into a convertible and I guess what had happened or at least allegedly is that a piece of debris hit the front windshield, broke the braces, then with all that high pressure hitting the front windshield, because I think the truck's front windshield is the most vertical. Yeah, vertical is right. Vertical of any NASCAR car that we have. So there's a ton of pressure coming on that front windshield. So if it has no bracing, it buckles in. Well, the roof and the front windshield attach with these very nice bolts that came out of the four car at uh, Talladega last year. If they, if, if that pressure becomes too much, then air will get into the crack of the roof and just peel it right off. And I guess that's what happened. It, it turned it into a convertible truck. It was the damnedest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, there's just not (laughs) another way to put it. It was a convertible truck. The roof came off the truck. Yeah. So, uh, Kyle Busch, he comes back to the truck series and uh, and wins the race. I, I talked to him um, during the uh, drivers' meeting this uh, before the Cup race this morning, and he uh, he was certain that uh, there was a bigger crowd for the truck race than the Xfinity race, and it was he was certain that it was because he was in the race. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ser- I'm serious. No, I'm I'm being serious. He said it it had to be KFB. I says, oh, that's cool. It's third person, but um, <laughs> but but he he was that we they had a double header. He wins the truck race. That was awesome. They you know he he took those kids to school on that for sure. Um, it looked like his truck just worked a lot better on the bottom than others, or he did a better job driving. Um, but he comes back. Uh, spire gets Spire. I don't know. If spire has won. A truck race before probably not because they don't No, they've had a truck for the last year or so didn't it, uh yeah because they win there was a truck race at north yeah. Wilkesboro last but i'm noticing year, right? yeah but i'm noticing they like the ties between spire and hendrick seem to be very very tight like 
they're wearing the same clothes and everything. So I don't know if Hendrick just makes a big order and says, "Hey, buddies down the road, do you need you need clothes too or whatever?" But when Spire took over KBM and now they've got like three or four trucks and they've got uh, three Cup cars now. Um, this this team is is definitely kind of a starter team. It seems like into into Hendrick, like HendrickCars.com is running on a on a truck. You would think. I just see a lot of sponsor correlations and a lot of other things that makes me think they're all one and the same. It's not their first. William Byron actually got one in 22 and mm. the seven truck for Spire. Did they win one last year? Oh, they did. Uh, I'm yeah. seeing North Wilkesboro. Yep. Yep. Uh, right. Kyle Larson was in the oh, truck. That's why. I How did these you not guys, remember these Larson? guys? These guys just going down there, just stealing these trophies from these young guys. Y'all ought to feel bad for yourselves. Why don't you do it? He does once a year. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. It's called the uh, Darlington Xfinity Race. That's my cherry picking uh, event. Uh, but listen, I told you all I wanted to retire. I it's. I don't know if it's official that I'm going to run the uh, Darlington Xfinity Race. Um, it's TBD. I told you all I wanted to quit while I was ahead. Just go ahead and call that an Xfinity career. Um. It's it's tough. It's so tough to do it a double header during uh, Southern Five Hundred weekend. That that race is hard. This old man don't want to run two week two days. That's for sure. But I've been doing it for Sport Clips for a long time. They've been a title sponsor, and we win races. So we'll see how that goes. eBay Motors is here for the ride with the parts you need for the prices you want. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. Anyway, so let's move on to Cup now. Um, let's let's start this whole thing over. Um, holy cow, what a race. I knew the fans were going to love it when my team guys, who just spent five or seven minutes, whatever the DVP clock is, which is the damaged vehicle policy, trying to fix my car. It's beat all to hell. We we were running around half speed for those last few laps, come to the car, and they were all like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what we just saw. They said, it was just, a, you guys are nuts. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, are we going to, you know, I'm I'm in a crappy mood because once again, 30 laps to go. <laughs> two weeks in a row I'm leading the race and uh, but twice I end up getting wrecked um or getting in a wreck or causing wreck I don't even know at this point um but it seems like uh so I've, I'm kind of frustrated about the result and they're just like oh my gosh just a just amazing did you see the finish I'm like Guys, it was on the other side of the track. No, I'm putting around here 120 miles per hour. No, I did not see the finish. So uh, I did see it, and I was like, wow, that's cool. You know, just total Denny Downer because I'm crapped out about my day. But, you know, as time goes on, you kind of get over it, and then you realize yeah, I, I log on to social media, and I'm seeing how much press it's getting, how much social media buzz it's getting. What a finish. What Hashtag, a finish. That was number one on sports. And NASCAR, at, at an hour after the race, was number five trending on sports and on Twitter. Yeah, it's great. I mean, that's certainly everyone in Daytona is uh, smiling at Daytona headquarters for NASCAR. Uh, SMI with Marcus Smith, uh, happy certainly with that result. Um, yeah, it's, it's such a 50-50 thing for me because I used to love super speedway racing because I felt like I could control my destiny more than people gave it credit for. For many, many years, drivers have said, oh, super speedway racing, it's just a, it's a game of luck and chance. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like you, you see the same guys up front all the time. I would say now you see different guys up front because it, it is more of a game of chance. It's track position. It's everyone, you know, you don't have to, it's hard for me to explain this, but you don't have to think through how to make a run to get to the front. They just happen through the line you're in or whatever you might, whatever might happen. You can always get to the front. Now, when it gets down to the end, such as like when Kyle Busch made that 
bold move down the backstretch on the white flag lap to get to the outside of the 12. That, okay, that's a skill move. He, you could see he backed up to the car that's behind him, got a run on the 12. Now he finished third in this whole deal. But it's, that was a skill move, right? Where if you're just leading one line or another, you're just kind of looking back there and like, come on, guys. You know, you're trying to keep them close and you're just hoping that line continues to, to move forward. So I'm so 50-50 on this type of racing now. And it's because maybe it's just the odds have caught up to me a little bit where I feel like, you know, I had such good results for such a long time and I wasn't getting wrecked out of these things. And you certainly want it. I just... I want to be in full control of the result. And you could probably look at so many drivers today, either they got caught up in the first wreck or the second or the third or the fifth or the sixth, whatever it might be. And someone causes it. Of course, there's someone that causes it, but there's so many innocent bystanders because we're all jammed up in this tight pack. But that's also what makes it for a photo finish at the end of a race in a green, white, checker, five lap to go finish. But is this race different than your average super speedway race? Like, it just seemed like we watched Daytona last week, and it was fairly clean. You know, there was a big one, but it was fairly clean. Mm -hmm. And this one was not fairly clean whatsoever. It yeah. just seemed like this one had a diff has a different dynamic to it. Like, is it more difficult? Are the cars handled? I think it's more difficult. I do. I, I think that with the track being so narrow, handling definitely plays a role for sure. Not all the cars are just stuck to the racetrack and it's strictly air that you're battling. You're battling, you know, uh, you know, being aero tight behind somebody or being loose when someone's behind you. It's certainly this race is more difficult than a uh, Daytona or Tal Daytona or Talladega. And, and I mentioned it pre-race as well is that this track at Atlanta, the runs are bigger. The actual draft and the super speedway effect of the draft is more pronounced at Atlanta, 100% more than what it is at Talladega. And like 50% more, it feels like, than Daytona. And what I believe, it's because air just gets trapped in the, in the facility. And the smaller it is, the, the more the air just gets swirling and going, right? So... The runs at a Talladega are not as big as they are at Daytona. And the runs at Daytona are not as big as they are at Atlanta because the track is narrower. And the narrower the track, that air, that jet stream, it becomes more powerful. Where at, at Talladega, the thing is so wide that the air just goes all over the place. And yeah. it, it can it, it can escape easier. I mean, we saw four wide multiple times today. It just yeah. seemed like everything happened faster for you guys in the cars. True. No doubt about it. I mean, everything happened faster for sure. Uh, the holes close up quicker. Um, the runs come harder. Uh, the, the first wreck, I mean, you kind of look and it's, it was just kind of a stack up deal where the the front the outside line just starts stacking up and next thing you know the whoever's in 15th or 10th or whatever it might be is they don't check up in time they get run over so it's just all because we're in this super tight pack so um yeah i i i'm starting to build a love hate for speedway racing because i do believe next gen is a little bit more of a game of chance than uh, the previous generation. And when you go back to like Dale Jr. generation, Gen 4, Gen 3 back in Dale Earnhardt days. But see, like what I'm. The, what, the cars were more spread out, so they had to build runs. They had to make sure their car was handling really well. These things are just all clumped together. And what happens is when you spin us around like a washing machine and, and someone drops something in there, it's just, just, it'll destroy a ton of them. And we used to have big wrecks back in the day anyway, but it's just. I don't know. I'm just starting to not love them as much. And I could just be coming a grumpy old man too. So I take that with a grain of salt. But what I'm wondering is, is yes, there's chance involved in like the Daytona race and Talladega, but it just seems like there's much more chance involved in this Atlanta race that yeah. it's giving those other two races kind of a bad name. This is, that's what I'm taking 
from what I'm listening that's, to you say. It's fair, but I mean, the Daytona 500, uh, Jared, I mean, I don't know. If you look at the the list of one-time winners, it, these are guys that have not won on most any other track. Like that, That's their one win. There's a lot of drivers that have got two, three wins in their career, and it's all come at Daytona or whatever it might well, that's be. That's always been the equalizer to an extent, right? Is it an equalizer, or do we believe that those drivers are just specialized in that? If they were, then they would win more at those types of racetracks. Like Ricky Stenhouse. For, let me give you Ricky Stenhouse. I, his Daytona 500 is not luck because he he's won multiple sp- super speedway races, and he's always up front when it comes down to it. So while he doesn't win often on other type tracks, there's a lot of factors that go into that. You can't call his one win luck okay. because because he's a perennial contender. Sure, but on the show, we also didn't call Michael McDowell's win luck. So we did another. not because, so. he, because he's a perennial guy that runs up front on those types of tracks. He has a special skill set. Okay, yep. was William Byron's win luck? I'm not going to call anyone <laughs> out. Let, don't even leave me down <laughs> well, this Well, I've only road. got two more to go. No, that's just in the last couple of years. I, I'm just saying in general, it's... Super speedways have always had a factor of allowing the lesser skilled to get dubs for sure. 100%. I don't think anyone can refute that. It is interesting your take because Larson said this was the most fun he's ever had on a drafting track. And I feel like that was the and sentiment from a lot of uh, I, I, drivers after the race. Yeah, tonight. listen, if there's anyone that should hate super speedways, <laughs> it's Kyle Larson because <laughs> I don't know what his crash rate is. Uh, I I certainly closed the gap on that today with him, but man, he has had a rough go finishing wise, and he runs up front, but he just he makes bold moves and he gets in a lot of crashes, you know, most not hit even his doing. Um, he just he's just got bad luck, and it's just you can't always say it's all bad luck, right? Sometimes you just keep putting yourself in a position that it's bound to happen sooner or later, but I don't know. It's, uh, I think I'm just not far enough removed from my poor finish and being frustrated about doing what I thought, you know, I, all I could do. And then next thing you know, I'm four wide and I can't go. Daniel sticks me three wide at the bottom, the 41 or the, 14 then tries he's trying to go on the inside of someone we're four wide on a corner it's three wide and it just wasn't it didn't work i i tried to back out i knew when he said four wide i immediately started slowing down but there's no room and the 14 you know i even think he he said yeah it was probably my my fault and and i think i heard the announcers saying you know (laughs) this this had been a time coming I don't think it's anyone's fault. He's trying to get to the front in a very crucial time of the race, but it's just a narrow track, and you know it's you, sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. But the next me and next gen on super speedways, I run well, but I'm finishing like ass, and it's driving me crazy. For what it's worth, I don't even think you should be too disappointed because 30 other cars were also involved in an incident today <laughs> is that the number i feel like i it's think it ended right. with five cars weren't involved maybe but yeah briscoe was like a poker player just on tilt you knew he was going to bust at some point and it's like <laughs> when is it going to happen like the announcer everyone was just waiting for it and there it is and unfortunately you i i only them. i of course i haven't had time to go back and watch the race but you guys thank you for the the links Travis does a great job of sending me links of each incident or certain highlights of the race and the one minute clip that they that you posted of our turn three wreck that eventually just did me in for the night, um, you hear before the wreck happens, Kevin Harvick saying <laughs> that, um, well, this is something like this is going to get him eventually. Oh, oh, there he goes. <laughs> so I don't know what he was doing the laps leading up to that, but obviously probably some pretty bold moves and. Uh, I think Boyer says, well, that was a dart without feathers there. Uh, that was an old uh, saying that they called David Reagan at at uh, Martinsville way back in the day. So, hey, it 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 is what it is. 
I mean, I tried. I, I looked at all the incidents I mean, you that should, I were in. Actually, you should probably be thankful because you spun through the infield once and you came back and, and took the lead again. And then you crashed again and you came back and took the lead again. Like, how many lives do you, you want? Came you came out know? fourth after one of your <laughs> crashes, for crying out loud. I, I didn't just fourth out of my ass. No, but usually when like you're involved in an accident, you don't come out fourth, and you did the one. I didn't. It's because, I yes, I had to pit before the end of the stage. I then passed seven cars before the end of the stage, so I leapfrogged seven others I pitted with. Travis, this guy crashes, comes down <laughs> to pit with the lead lap cars, gains seven spots on pit road, and comes out fourth. And I had flat tires, all kinds of shit. It was just terrible. How was the tire fall off today? Fall off? You're talking about fall off? <laughs> <laughs> There's no damn fall off. Give me a break. I don't think they these tires, tire. we could have run 400 miles on these tires. But fortunately, Goodyear is going to do a tire test and hopefully give us a grippier tire. That's going to jam us up into a pack tighter than you've ever seen before. I had another saying, but I couldn't couldn't say it on on uh, on air. Um, it, yes, they they are planning a tire test for the uh, the uh, playoff race. That is, they're going to add grip to the tire because they feel like you know, hey, the track's starting to age. It's about time. It, they don't need that rock hard tire that we've got. That thing is, we need to get rid of that thing. It, we don't need it at any track that we go to, uh, especially the next gen cars. Just don't wear out tires anyway. Can I make a request? When they make changes, can they say like, oh, it's because of this testing? I feel like we hear about all these <laughs> testings and I never know what actually comes from it. Does that make any sense? Because nobody really knows, Travis. I've done two-day tire test at Texas and all these other tracks, and they'll they'll just they'll run us through a bunch of tires and then not come back with any of the ones that we tested. So I'm not really sure. I know that it has been on Goodyear's um, bulletin board from us for a long time. Please build softer tires, ones that at least wear. That's what will also create uh, more of a skill game because you have to tune in your setup. Like right now, everyone's set up. They're probably all over the map, but they all drive the same um, within reason, right? So um, I think that uh, they're they're on board. They're going to start you know building us some softer tires, and that's going to help the racing at, at all tracks. So no one really knows. It uh, could be poor reporting, but beats the hell out of me. I think that uh, – I basically look at a uh, uh, driver report week in, week out to find out which tires we're running and where do we run it before that. The wait is almost over, North Carolina. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is coming to your state. On March 11th, you'll finally be able to bet on all your favorite teams and all your favorite sports. With FanDuel, there's tons of ways for you to get in on the action. You can bet on everything from the money line to over-unders to which team will win this year's Tobacco Road rivalry all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, with live betting, you can even pick which player will put up the next bucket and the one after that. See for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Just go to FanDuel.com backslash Denny so you can be the first to know when FanDuel goes live in North Carolina. That's FanDuel backslash Denny. Make every moment more with FanDuel. 21 and older and present in North Carolina. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Availability subject to regulatory approval. There was a crash today during um, green flag pit sequences that did not cause a caution between William Byron and Michael McDowell. Uh, what do you make of that decision by NASCAR? Yeah, they were in a tough spot. They were. I was not even aware of this crash. So it tells you what was going on. I was probably on the other end of the track, probably still. No, uh, you were pitting, didn't you? I think, yeah. I think he was pitting. You were pitting when it happened. Oh, we needed that damn caution then. It didn't matter. We were going to crash again at some point anyway, <laughs> later on. So, um, yeah, they. So with Atlanta, this is one of the most difficult pit roads that we have. Without a doubt, which is why you saw kind of a, a jam up. I think I jammed up the 19 and somebody else the very first time. I I was all out of whack with where I needed to be coming onto 
to, to pit road. I, I think I needed to be at this mark, but I'm not at that mark. It's just, there's a lot of variables and I'm trying to make sure no matter what, I don't speed. And so I can't find my the light. The consequences of speeding here are you're dead. Ridiculous. It's you're, you're going to go laps down and your race is done for the most part. So I'm trying to be conservative if anything, but I noticed that guys are hauling ass f- past me, passing me on getting on a pit road. And I'm like, well, I, I must not be speeding, so I'll speed up, and I couldn't find my lights, and I was just, it was just all over the place. So get back to the story here. The 24 and 30, the 34 lost control, and the 24 was an innocent bystander and kind of got, drove into the wall. And so they spun out, and what NASCAR normally would do is throw a caution. That, was, that is very cautionable reason to throw the uh, yellow flag. But there was many cars that had already pitted there were many on pit road and there were many about to pit and if they throw a caution there the field would have been so mixed up there i mean it's a it's a strong possibility there would have only been five cars on the lead lap and it could have stayed five cars on the lead lap until the end of the race you know until another big wreck and then something else happens so they were in a tough spot i guess For the show's sake, it was better for them not to throw the caution because it it only kind of really screwed the two guys that actually wrecked. Um, And it even didn't screw them because they had so much damage anyway. It really didn't matter. Um, But it's a tough spot because no other track other than maybe Martinsville, if you pit, you lose multiple laps. And so... Uh, if they throw a caution there, there's m- so many cars two laps down or more, and it just would have it would have really messed up the show. Well, for what it's worth, Kyle Busch, Ross Chastain, and if I'm not mistaken, Bubba Wallace also had uh, pit road speeding penalties today. All finished in the top ten. Hmm. I wonder were they under green or yellow? I believe at least Bubba's was under green. I want to say I, I want to say was. Ross and Kyle were in that. I think around that uh, when they didn't call the caution. Well, if they had a, uh, okay, okay. I was wondering why the eight was getting the lucky dog at some point. I'm like, well, how did he go a lap down? That must have been why. Yeah, it must have happened under green for sure. Um, you know, I, I have looked at the replay of me and Kyle twenty times. I still can't figure out what happened. I mean, we got off the plane, ready to go home, ready to come here, and it's like Denny's still sitting on the plane watching this damn replay trying to figure out who wrecked who. I I, I was driving, <laughs> and the next thing you know, I was sideways, and I was spun out, and I... Oh, in your car, in like the race car, not like... <laughs> yes, in the race car. Still watching the and I couldn't figure out how the hell that happened. And... I didn't even know, maybe I wasn't just paying attention. Maybe I was just lulled to sleep because I didn't have a car right in front of me. I didn't have one like right beside me. I had a little gap behind me. And I just, maybe I relaxed down the straightaway. I'm not really sure, but I look at multiple angles and I'm like, oh, well, he came up. And then I see another one. I'm like, oh, I definitely came down. So it's like they both happened. And and it just when he got super close to the left rear, it just I I it shot me even further left, and I I guess I spun myself out. I I'm not really sure, but no You're, harm, no foul. I mean it it sucks because damn it, I was in the top five of two stages in a row and did not get because I got wrecked. Um, here's your in car audio. What happened? I thought I was clear. Lambert, and they said no. Lambert, negative. I was still saying one inside. He may have been, but I'm wondering if I just relaxed for a second. I, I that's the only thing I can think of is like I just maybe wasn't. But I, but I looked. I really did. I looked at kind of my. Am I tracking the cars in front of me? Because you can't look at the yellow lines or the white lines on the racetrack because they with that dog leg, they, they, they go this way and then they go that way. It's all messed up. 
But I'm looking, I'm like, I'm in the tire tracks of the car in front of me. But he's in the tire tracks of the car in front of him when we make contact. So I couldn't figure it out. It doesn't matter because it was, you know, it did no harm to me. Clearly, Kyle's not trying to wreck me on purpose, and I'm clearly not trying to wreck myself. So it's just, as they say, one of them deals. And then we go to the second wreck that I got in. I pulled the trifecta tonight. My team says I, I did the trifecta. I crashed in every stage, one, two, and three. Um, so I was actually going to send you screenshots, Jared, because I was going to have you uh, have you post something of all uh, my wrecks. You already are planning it, weren't you? I'm sorry, planning it. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a dick. All right. And uh, this is great. Now I got a good sound bite to go along with it. Perfect. Travis, just clip that. Send it to me tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I was just, you know, figuring, you know, if you are going to play the Powerball, definitely play the 11. It's going to hit. I didn't get it. Okay, never mind. We'll move on. Okay, so the other wreck, the 22, pulled a late block on the 17 on the last lap and freaking wrecked himself, the 17 and me. And, uh, I was top five again coming to the end of a stage and got nothing out of it. I'm, am I just generally cursed? Like, we always bring it up about the end of the year and uh, it just didn't work out for whatever reason. But why are you over there chuckling? I see you chuckling. <laughs> but, like, I'm tired of this shit. Every time I'm in a good position, somebody screws up right in front of me. And even the ones that you, like, uh, avoided today, they happen, like, right in front of you or right behind you. They said I missed one by a, the first one. Like the first one. On tiny. The, yeah, first one. You're bit. lucky Austin Dillon didn't clip your left rear. Left rear or right rear? Left rear. Right? He spun up. Yeah. Left rear. Oh. Maybe right rear. I don't hmm. know. He was right behind you. I don't know what the record. I'm, I think three incidences is one of my records for one event. Um, it's now four in the first two races. <sighs> Jeez Louise! But uh, in all in all seriousness about this wreck, this is what I'm this is why I'm questioning with things happening faster at Atlanta. Joey said that he just was plowing tight in the car, was getting up the racetrack on him. Like, I don't know. Is it just is that what he harder said? Harder to dump? I'm ninety nine percent sure. Yeah. Thank you, Travis. Said I just kept I just kept plowing up the racetrack. And I believe he did an interview afterwards. He was like, I, "My mistake. I just." Oh yes, Travis's note here. I just kept plowing up the racetrack. The 22 was trying to block the 17. The 17 was getting to the outside of the 22, and he just came right up. Like, it's one of those things, it, you know, I, I definitely am, am guilty at times, but it, you just see this, and I'm not picking on Joey because you see it regularly. Like, it's just the end of the stage, fellas. You're just going to lose a spot. Maybe. The 17 ain't going to clear you if he gets to your outside. You're not fighting for the stage win, by the way. You're fighting for, like, fourth or fifth. But instead, you don't live to race another lap because you think this is the most important block that's got to happen right now. So, I don't know. Um, it didn't matter because Denny rebounded and was still running. We still, still took the lead <laughs> after that. <laughs> wreck, so, it didn't matter. Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah. So, then uh, we we... We rebound. The, that's the end of that stage. Who won that stage? Blaney? Somebody? No. Cindric? I don't know. What does it even matter? Um, what other incident? We, we got Elliot got spun out by Ross. Ross bumped him into turn three. I did see that one. Can't do that to the hometown, boy. Um, this one also looked like, though, that Chase may have been getting out of the gas and just a like I <laughs> Chase don't know. wrecked himself from I don't from know. behind. I just I don't know <laughs> if the evidence is conclusive to pin it on Ross. <laughs> really, really? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't. Really it's know inconclusive. What I'm talking about, but wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you were to run into the back of me on um, on Catawba Avenue, Jared. Who would get the ticket? Did you? That's not a good argument. It is. 
Did you hit the brakes? Did you like brake check me or something? Get off my ass. Stop tailgating. So you instigated it. No, I'm saying that I Chase is ticket. racing. I'm supposed to be Chase in control, is right? racing. And Ross is jammed up his rear end. And so Chase, he's got to make moves depending on what's going on in front of him. If he's got people checking up, well, if you don't give the guy in front of you room entering the corner, like everyone, no one's that in that part of the pack, very little of the field's actually running wide open. Everyone's lifting a little bit entering the corner. So you always got to give your competitor a little room for error there because we're not at a track like Daytona or Talladega where everyone's just stuck and you can enter right on the rear bumper. So it's just, it was a stock stack up, obviously not intentional. So let's go to the end of the race. I mean, we've got a list of crashes here. We we just, we're just not going to touch on all of them. That's just a fact. I'm tired. Um, You've you've got the end of the race, and it looked like to me when I saw that Blaney was uh, leading with a few laps to go. Oh, I I did something. Did you hear what I said after the race? What I did for the first time in my whole career, eighteen years, nineteen years. Peed in my seat. Oh, I was about to say that. I was about to say that. Yeah, I was hurting. <laughs> I was so thirsty. <laughs> the second half of the race, but I couldn't drink anymore because I, my body, I'm sitting there in the seat and I'm like, please just let it go. Let it go. And I just couldn't let it go. And I, I, I've had, I just have never been able to go in the car. There's something about it. I'm either, it's because I'm not holding it or I'm not standing up. Something just doesn't feel right to my body. And it just, it just hangs on. But but after so I'm sitting there during the red flag, and I'm I get on the radio and I say to uh, <laughs> to the spotter says, "What's the hold up? When what? Why aren't we going? Why are we red flag?" He's like, "Oh, we got a problem over here. They're cleaning up a mess." <clears throat> I said, "All right." So I'm looking at my clock. I, I actually have a clock on my dash as well. I don't know if anyone else runs a clock, but I just like to kind of know for reference for time and if the track changes, you know, make mental notes of it, but. I, I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, let's see, there's 20 laps to go. How many more yellows is there going to be? I just don't think I'm going to make it. I just don't think I'm and, – and my stomach is killing me. Like, I ain't got to go number two. I got to go number one. But I just – my bladder is just dying. And so they finally they, – I get to pit road, and they're working on the damage, and I just close my eyes, and I'm like – just trying to think of something that will make me go. This is that painful of a thing for you to do, huh? Yes. And then as soon as I hit, I got the first dribble. Boom. There's out. no stopping it, after that. No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> it was warm and then it was cold. <laughs> it was, I never, I, I never felt what it felt like to pee in my seat, but I kind of liked it. <laughs> I yeah. did. Is that weird? Is it weird? Well, I, I've never peed in know, a car before, so I, I can't. know. I know. I don't want to you, sound. I don't want to sound weird, but I kind of liked it because of the relief, the really re, the relief from like the pain or just having to go. Let me ask go. you this: Have you ever? I didn't like, like the feeling, uh, but but it was warm, and then it was cold. Have you ever peed in the ocean or like the lake before out here? Of course. Is it similar? Mm-mm. No. Oh. Because that feels nah, good. Because you're, you're not sitting in it. Like, because it, it goes from me to the next layer to the next layer. So, unfortunately, I ha- I'm telling my... my <laughs> I'm telling Philpot, the, uh, the interior specialist on the number 11, said, hey, man, I left you something special in there. <laughs> So you won't be wearing that fire suit again? No, gonna... no, the fire suit's fine. It, underwear, fire suit, it, it's soiled, but it's it's fine. I'm more concerned with, and I know many, many drivers do this on a regular basis, and I never understood how they could do it because I've tried, and my body says, no, there's no way I'm releasing right now. 
evidently Carl Edwards used to do it every week. I think Tyler Reddick does it every week. But I was I was super paranoid when I got out. I'm like, is he gonna smell the pee in the seat? Like, I just I didn't want I didn't want I just had to tell him right. I can't just let him find out and be like, dude, what the hell? I'm like, hey, just so you know. So I don't know. Do they wash it or they just let that stuff marinate in there? I wonder if like this the this because it goes into the seat. The seat is, you know, this soft fabric. It's a foam. It's going in your car next week. I know. So does it yeah. just sit in there? I mean, we'll have to follow up. You'll figure it out. I wonder if they do it. Do they just Febreze it? We will. You will literally find out. Okay. These are the Sunday. answers we need you to figure out for us. Also, was your fire suit? Were you worried about like a pee stain when you got out and people would know? I gave myself a pat check, front and back. Just kind of looked down and said, "I'm good. Not really too concerned. I, I'll, I, it's dark out. <laughs> it's not going to be not going to be too bad." But so th- that was the mo- most historical moment I had of the entire day is finally letting one go. So <laughs> that's that was my highlight. Um, let's actually get to the final part of this race. Um, carry me here for a second. I was just about the, the, the Billy Madison line. If peeing your pants is cool. <laughs> Consider me Miles Davis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Denny pees his pants too, everybody. <laughs> hey, there's been others that have done worse. Do you need this audio? Record. Jared, do you need this audio too for I, a social video? Probably, probably. Um, okay, so the finish. Ryan Blaney is controlling the restart, and I'm thinking this thing is all but over, especially when he takes the white. There was nothing coming, and the 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 99 had made a couple attempts to pass him on the outside. I mean, getting really close to the wall to no avail. It, it was it just didn't seem like it was going to happen. But as you saw in the turns one and two, the key moment of the race that decided how that race finished in that three wide fashion was really the the 12 getting too far ahead when he got through one and two. When he got through one and two, the 99 was still getting his shit together, trying to move, come back into whoever was behind him. The eight comes off of turn two. He's backing up and the 12 had too much of a gap there, and it was a huge run. And then the eight, such a heads-up move to kind of shoot the middle gap there because he's probably thinking that he's got such a big run, he's probably going to clear the 99, who at the time still didn't have a huge run coming. Um, But the eight made a bold move. I thought it was a great move. Um, And we just had one of those great finishes. And hats off to the drivers because I know I'm saying hats off a lot. I gotta come up with something else. The um, we gotta give credit to the three drivers because none of them wiped each other out. They they hardly even touched, right? Like great job, Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney, Daniel Suarez, just racing this thing, racing it out. Um, can you hear me? I just pulled my plug out. I can hear you. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, for them to just see how this thing was all going to play out, it's really what made such a great, fantastic finish. And hopefully, um, you know, this this gives some well-needed momentum for NASCAR to, to start their 2024 season. Did somebody on this finish, whether it's Blaney, whether it's Suarez or, or KB, did, did somebody do something here that gave them an edge? In this finish? Or is it just we're all holding down the gas and whoever <laughs> yeah. gets their first win? Yeah, everyone's holding down the gas for sure. Blaney probably feels when he was probably put three wide to the bottom, he's probably thinking, oh, crap, I'm probably not in a good spot. But, damn, he missed it by it had to be three inches, two inches. Like, even the – NASCAR needs to upgrade their photo finish camera because it that is – like you see the ghost of the front end, right? You don't actually see the front end of the ninety nine. They did. Uh, they had a new uh, little graphic to show where who was leading at it when a caution came out. Though I saw that this week. Oh, really? But yeah, they need to call horse racing because they have like some serious high tech photo finish stuff. Oh, there's there's 
great technology out there for well, sure. But like, guys, 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 cameras are involved here. Okay, a horse is not going. 200 miles an hour. Uh-oh. The frames per second needed. Jared, to... don't let your facts get in the way of our story. <laughs> Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> Good point, Jared. Okay, you're right. You're right. But there's got to be something that can super, super duper slow mo it without it being like a ghost of a car. Surely. Yeah, in a couple of years from now, it'll get better. Okay. Well, it it clearly the ninety nine car won by a nose or by an inch. We're not really sure, but uh, yeah, I mean, you would think who's got the most momentum is the car on the very outside, which is Daniel Suarez. So the reason, the key moment, and why he won that race is he came off the high line of turn four, so he was the furthest towards the wall. Well, that racetrack, if you've ever been there in person. It actually kind of goes like downhill. When you come off a turn four, the higher you are, the more downhill you're going to the start-finish line. I haven't seen anyone bring this up yet, but it's definitely factual that when you, the bottom car is, it's pretty level from the the turn to the start-finish line, but the high line is going downhill. And I think that that's why the 99 car won. It's momentum. He unwinds the wheel quicker. Um, There's factors in it. But since the banking is 20-something degrees, it's higher, right? So you've been to a track, the banking, the wall's way up there. So if you start way up and you come down, the 99 car was coming downhill at the start-finish line where the 12 was more on a level playing field or... Do you think about that, Jared? Yeah, I'm trying to look, watch the video and see if I can visually see it. Yeah, you just need to look at the track. And, and you know, you, we we drive on Talladega after the race every time, right? Yeah. you, you got to drive up the banking. So if you drive up, what goes up must come down. So the straightaways, since they are level, the banking is higher in the corners. So you come downhill, which is why we always you see us during qualifying – at super speedways, we start at the wall before we come to green, and then we pull it down because we go downhill. So just that little bit of angle, little gave bit, Daniel, just enough to just edge enough. out. There's one new playoff driver in this year now. I hate he's in. So much for my prediction of him doing worse. Oh, I probably was right there with you. No, I think you said he'll do better. I th- I don't think so, but. We know that he's going to be part of the playoffs. And so who this scares is those bubble drivers, the ones that are always on the bubble of trying to make it in on points um, because they don't win every single year. Um, This makes it a little bit harder for them because um, it it just – it takes a spot, right? If for some reason Daniel doesn't have a rock star year for the rest rest of the regular season and isn't – wasn't going to get in on points. He took a spot on a win. But, you know, he's run well enough. Uh, I mean, again, we've only seen two Super Spooway races, so let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Um, it just, it does. It's This is a spot when you're thinking about who's in, who's out. Daniel was one of those guys where we were, you know, always kind of debating, will he get in or will he not? <clears throat> yeah, and a lot of the talking heads out there uh, – we're questioning was Daniel on the hot seat this year, and this kind of cools that for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think Justin Mark's going to have an ordeal on his hands for sure. Um, you know, it just depends. I mean, if if he wants to go purchase another charter, um, it becomes easier on him for sure. Uh, he's got you know four drivers or so. Uh, he's got two cup seats. Um, you know, they got some sort of alliance with Spire, I, I guess, but it seems like everyone has an alliance with Spire. So I don't know how all this is all working, but certainly Daniel did himself some some good favors this week by by winning. Justin did say, I can't imagine Daniel Suarez ever not being a driver at Trackhouse Racing. That's tonight. too vague. I know. I hear that. And I listened to the teardown. And when you say statements like, 
he'll always be a part of track house. I'm sorry. That's you're not, he, he's, do, it's all he can say more than likely. Right. But it's, that doesn't mean driving a, that he didn't say driving a cup car in, at track house. He didn't say driving the 99 car and SVG. Meanwhile, this right. weekend went third at Xfinity. So you just got, that was a big, yeah. I know it's Xfinity, That's, but for Dan, you know, a lot of people would have said SVG number three. And if he would have had a bad, you know, race here, but with this win now, it allows him a little. It, do, it does. It should. But I, I, I'm going to just tell you that this, this thing comes down to dollars and cents sometimes. And when you got a couple drivers that are very, very close or what you deem very close, you're going to make whatever makes most financial sense. And sometimes in some instances, you, you do whatever makes financial sense to survive and the talent doesn't mean as much. So we'll see how it all plays out, but it's a really good thing for track house. Uh, certainly it is for Daniel. Um, hopefully this gets him some momentum, right? Um, you know, the, trust me, if, if Daniel's got a fully funded car every single year, sponsors that love him, we're not even talking about this. I don't believe, I, I, I don't believe that we had these conversations. Um, but you know, some of these teams, that you know really hit if if are trying to grow they're trying to you know continue to move up move up get better get better track house is one of those for sure um they're they're gonna they're gonna make good business sense and but and good uh competition sense and you know this i think it this may muddy the waters this is just a total speculation on my point part it's just it might muddy the waters more than it helps it for sure well yeah because now you may have three winning drivers in your but in if your you stall. if you plan on expanding your team then it's it's a non-factor right so but i mean that's you know how difficult that is though sure i mean absolutely it, it, it is going to be difficult as it should be you know uh I, I think we heard dale jr talk about this week uh you know he's you don't know where what to think about this whole charter deal right and i think um I love Dale Jr., but he sat on the sidelines just too long, and and eventually you got to get in the game. If you're not going to get in the game, then you can't, you can't, you know, you, you can't worry about, you know, the what ifs if you're if you're never going to take a shot. And and so, uh, if it's if, but you know, back when charters were ten, fifteen thousand, ten or fifteen million, he was saying it's too much. I don't think they'll ever go back to that level unless Jim takes him away. So um, we'll see. You know, you got to make a move, and certainly the next few that, that get traded will probably get traded at a high number, as they should. It should be hard to get in. It shouldn't be for everyone because these teams make significant, significant investments in the sport, and they should be rewarded with it. Nonetheless, um, Atlanta is – this season's first playoff race come the playoffs. So it'll be interesting to see what ticket sales are like for that race, what the hype is. For I thought that the race. crowd was good today. Do you notice that it was, it was, I mean, the it? weather was great. That obviously helped a lot of things. It looks sparse on TV to be honest in the stands. So one thing you got to keep in mind, it turns toward towards turn one. I, I hear you. I, I see your point a little bit, but I thought, they took out rows, right? The top rows of Atlanta yeah. are now like this. There's only one row per two or three rows. Like got like a drink rail, right? So they got rid of a row. So it's certainly they sh tightened up the capacity of it. But I thought generally speaking, when we've had really bad Atlanta crowds, and I thought this was a, a positive. I thought the crowd was bigger than what we've seen in the last few years for sure. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but no, I, I agree with you. I was editing photos of cars on track and w no, took notice of the crowd in the background. I was like, oh, wow, that looks that looks pretty good. Like the border of that crowd looks pretty good. Obviously, there can always be better. Right. But I think uh, for what this race was, I think it was pretty good. And I'm excited to see what it can be come playoff time, because now you have like a great precedent of like what this race. could. Yeah. Be. I mean, don't do that though. You can't set this race as a precedent. It's it, because it well, you're going to get let scale, down, sure. right? I mean, 
a three wide nose to nose photo finish. You know, these things should only happen every now and then. It, Absolutely. We shouldn't but, expect it to happen every week. And I, what I'm afraid of is we're going to go to Las Vegas and, it, you know, just because we don't have the craziness of what we've just seen for the last two weeks, um, people ha- it will be chemically in their brain to say, well, that's not as good. No, I'm talking about just Atlanta yeah, next yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it... I don't know of any playoff driver that will be excited to go to Atlanta though. That I mean because because it is. It's you can do everything right and not and get a terrible finish and that's not how you want to start your playoffs by any means. For sure. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things, other notes that we didn't touch on at the beginning half of this episode. Um all photographers have new vests this year. That's uh, it's a hot topic. I don't know if you know about that. I I did. I noticed you had a different color on. No more purple vest. No You're more. not purple vest guy. Nope. Purple vests are are done. Although I am curious of where they are. Like, is it is it cost two hundred fifty dollars to get that purple vest? And I don't know. Yeah, can we hang it up at the studio? We have someone from um, NASCAR is listening okay. to this. Oh, they listen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. They listen. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Um, all right. Patrick Rogers, Rob McKinney. This is my request for you guys. Get Jared his... What, what jersey were you? 560. Purple 560. Even if you got to make him another one, make the guy... He's creating content for you, okay? We're on the same team. Get the guy a framed... Get me the, get me the jersey. I'm calling it a jersey. I'll get it framed for Jared. It's a jersey. Okay. Purple vest 560, please. Because now he is maroon 311. Red 311. Red. That, red. That's red. not red. That looks maroon. That's pretty red. Not red. Anyway, 311 is a, is a good so, band. Good 90s band. So, so if you were looking for Jared, look for 311. That would have been handy when we were at Daytona. You know, three wins, 11 car. Yeah. 311. But I saw you posted on your Instagram Jared D. Allen, if you want to follow him. Um, and with the, uh, was it, what what song did you play? Amber by 311. Is it, whoa. Amber is the color of energy. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, Holler at him. Uh, I mean, I did a couple, I had like uh, quite a few appearances before the race. We had people, I mean, you're photo bombing. You know, people were requesting, hey, can I have Jared in the photo too? And I'm like, come on, the guy's working. Right. <laughs> he's got he's got his camera around, he's got his vest on, and here he is, you know, playing third wheel to my to my photos with the fans. Yeah. I mean They love you, Jared. They so, love you. Sorry. I hate to rain on your parade sometimes. It's okay. I can uh, share the spotlight with you. <laughs> SHR um, has roof rails removed from the ten and the forty one car. So will we see a penalty uh, forthcoming? Yikes. Man, these guys can't catch a break, and I'm not sure it's a break. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. Hard to speculate. No idea. I don't put it this way. I don't even know if it's a uh, spec part or it's a built part. Do you know, Travis? You, we were trying to. Look I that saw up, some right? speculation. I was trying to find out if it was a single source or not, but I'm not sure. Um, Either so way, obviously, we don't want to say one or another. Yeah, I, I don't want to speculate, but. Yeah, just not not good for sure. And so it's interesting. It's on the ten and forty one. They probably <laughs> yanked them quickly off the other cars uh, before they went through tech. Uh, so they had we had that one. We won't even speculate because we don't even know. But we won't speculate on the Joey Logano glove. I I love Larry Mack, but you gotta. You got to call a spade a spade every now and then. I heard, this is a safety issue, safety issue. Um, yeah, sort of. So Joey made a glove. I'm guessing he didn't stitch it himself. So somebody made a glove for him, and it was webbed. So when he spread his fingers out, he essentially had a mitten 
on his left hand. So in between the fingers, they they webbed it and added material <laughs> to create this giant webbed hand. Now, what he chose to do with that webbed hand is we saw it a little bit during qualifying. He was filling with the winning net or whatever. Uh, you see all of us kind of putting our hands out there um, uh, for qualifying, trying to block air coming in. But I don't know whether NASCAR is going to see this as a uh, – I, I think it was when – you, when you saw the news, uh, it was not SFI approved. Folks, that's like 10% of the story. It's not it, – yes, it – my guess is the glove was approved when you add webbing to in between the fingers. It probably needs to get re-approved because you've added material and they need to retest it. But that is not why NASCAR probably had issue with this because this is likely considered an aerodynamic device. So, you know, what's the difference in that and me putting something in my pocket and grabbing it and then holding it out there, you know what I mean, to to deflect air. It's it's basically one and the same. So um, while I get it, while that's what the rule stated is that they broke an SFI uh, safety rule. It this was not a safety problem. This was a uh, skirting the rules or getting. Uh, ingenuity too much ingenuity when it comes to deflecting air so i i don't know it's i don't know how they'll rule it whether it's just a done deal to your knowledge but he got boy he he ended up well on that first lap wreck he went from probably going two laps down to ending up you want to talk about a guy that made out he he's 20th on lap five when he was going to be two laps down dead last because of all the cars that wrecked so it actually, he probably was laughing his ass off going down pit road and just watching us crash going down the front straight. And remember, he was sitting on the front first row after qualifying. Yeah, so he would have missed the wreck, but... <laughs> no, I'm saying to your point of the glove, though, like, yeah, the yeah. car's fast, but... Yeah, it didn't. Listen, it's not a game changer on speed, but it's clearly uh, trying to deflect air in a non-conventional uh, way. How much I, does that, putting your hand in the window, What like how much does that truly help? More or less than a piece of tape. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I can't talk. <coughs> Screw you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, is this serious? About the same, if you really want to be honest. Okay. It's about the same. So then we will probably see a penalty coming this no, way. No, I, I mean... We added a piece of tape to the nose of the car under the wrap. Um, <clears throat> but I, I don't think this was as egregious as that. I think this was just, hey, how can we make, how can we give this guy a hockey mitt and stick it out there in that window? So um, I wonder if he was going to race it or not. Probably not, right? I'm not really sure, but certainly there was someone who saw the uh, in-car camera of him pulling on the window net. And the next thing you know, they're like, Whoa, is that a baseball glove? <laughs> I'm curious if NASCAR watches that on their own or if it's only because they saw it on the broadcast. Oh, I'm willing to say there was a whistleblower. Yeah. These, these teams tell on each other for sure. Those of you who don't know, I mean the teams, they call it a self-policing sport because that's, you know, we're, sitting next to each other. We're watching video of other cars. I mean, the NASCAR Cup Series, it's uh, full of snitches. I mean, all over the place. They tattletale. If they see something that someone's doing that is illegal or skirting the rule, oh, they'll tell the tower right away. They'll send that to John Probst or they'll send it to uh, Elton Sawyer and be like, hey, look, 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 look at that. That's and why this And they'll say, oh, well, well, we'll look into that. That's why this these things seem so weird because it like, just seems like there was zero chance that you were going to get away with it or that it, someone wasn't going to poke questions. Like there's just cameras everywhere. There's people everywhere. You've got 40 other teams 
on the grid who want you to get caught. You know, it's just, I don't know. It seems absurd. It's, I mean, it seems, yeah. For super speedway qualifying, like at Atlanta, I mean, likely this thing was run at Daytona as well, if I had to. I mean, probably. Maybe not. There's a there's somebody a, bring the tape out. There's a fan that had a clip of video, and you can't see with this hand out, but you can see him at the end of qualifying, quickly taking off the left hand glove, and the fans like, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but was he using it there? Oh, from Daytona. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was so much faster than the field at Daytona in qualifying. I he could have stuck ten fingers, ten toes outside the window. He <laughs> was the twenty two car on the front row at he, Daytona. He was on the pole. Yeah, he was on the pole. I know the answer to the question. Oh, uh, you were just being smart ass. Yeah. I got you. All right. Well, uh, hey, while you guys are listening to us, by the way, uh, if you don't mind going to our page and give us a uh, subscribe, like, follow on all of our channels, we would really appreciate it. We are beating uh, Door Bumper cl- Clear guys on uh, YouTube subscriptions. So, right? Subscriptions? Oh, yeah. Subscriptions. Yep. yep. We're beating them right now. I need to keep it going. Yeah, we, we got to keep that going for sure. Um, do you have a uh, a review? Yeah, I do. This one comes from Hollywood Duger. Uh, I got into the sport after watching the Bubba documentary and the latest series NASCAR put out is excellent. Finding this podcast and hearing the mindset of a good driver like Denny Hamlin. <laughs> it's just Denny spelled wrong. Denny Hamlin is awesome. Have to get some 2311 swag. Thank you, uh, Hollywood. Appreciate that review. Uh, I, you know, we hear it. You know, you you follow me to all the appearances. Someone brings up the Netflix thing at just about every single one. So uh, it seems like that's uh, really been a positive thing for the sport. Uh, finishes like these this weekend certainly help as well. And hopefully, this can just get us out of the mud. Get you know, if I don't if I don't see a bump in the ratings for Las Vegas then this is just all for naught. We're all just pissing in the wind at this point. So I, I don't know. Um, we got to see something for sure. Um, what else you got? That's it. Dear Denny. So, uh, do you want to answer Dear Denny? Okay. I'll do a Dear Denny. Okay. Dear Denny, when did you realize being a NASCAR driver was a real possibility? Hmm. When was it a real possibility? I would say when I went to a, that late model test um, that JD attended, and, and they said that they were going to sign me to a driver development deal at Joe Gibbs Racing back in 2003. Um, that's when I knew it was a possibility. Like my foot, my foot just got wedged in the door at Joe Gibbs Racing at that moment. So that's when I felt like it was possible. Now, then you still have self-doubt of like whether you will be able to actually compete well at this level. And it's just my very first truck race. I uh, you know, was able to get a top 10 with a very, very underfunded team um, at IRP. And you know, I, I remember actually me and Kyle Busch yeah, <laughs> were battling for 10th. He was in one of the best trucks, one of the, uh, the 47. It was like the Chevy All-Star truck at the time. Um, but, uh, I, I just remember at that moment when I finished top 10, I'm like, man, I think this might earn me another ride. And then, you know, it just kept snowballing one thing after another. And, you know, literally from that point to 14, 16 months later, I'm racing in the cup series. So it all happened pretty quick, but I would say kind of that 2003, 2002, 2003 time was where really my, my life path went from working at my dad's trailer shop and that's what I was going to do. And I was going to be very happy with that result to, Oh crap, I'm actually going to make it as a NASCAR driver. Did you know that that test, that there was a possibility that something could come from it or was there any pressure going into that? No, it, they weren't even looking for a driver like me. That's where, you know, I helped them pick out Eric Almarola who full swing is now back at, back at Joe Gibbs racing. It was when uh, Joe Gibbs racing and Reggie white started their diversity uh, uh, late model team. And so they asked me and Mark McFarlane, who's actually a crew chief at Joe Gibbs racing in their ARCA series. Um, he, uh, we were teammates and they invited us down to help pick out two diverse drivers for their program. 
and um, it just so happens I was running super fast laps, and they were like, well, hey, we're, I know we're not looking for a guy like Denny, but I think we might, you know, have found something here. So JD called up Joe um, and made it happen. So 10,000 bucks, man. I got, they wrote me a check, 10,000 bucks. I bought rims for my Ford Ranger, a plasma TV. I blew that money in two weeks, but I did get a JGR t-shirt out of it. <laughs> All right. Well, we got, uh, Vegas this week. Um, I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm ready to just go to a, a track where we're spread out a little bit. I can get a little elbow room. I need some elbow room. Uh, hopefully we our number 11 car shines this weekend. We've kind of lost a little bit of our mojo at Las Vegas from what we've had. Uh, we were really on a run there at that track for, for a couple years. Uh, but you know, last playoff race, we weren't as good, but that was when I had a bad shoulder, a really bad shoulder that weekend. So my crew chief will say that, that it's all my fault, the reason we didn't run well. Um, so I'm excited to see that. Anything else we're looking forward to this weekend, Jared? Um, just uh, the, the misadventures of Denny Hamlin and his crew in Las Vegas. That's about yeah, it. yeah. The boys are coming with me this weekend. Unfortunately, uh, Jordan and the kiddos are not going to be making a trip out. So the uh, the old dream team, as we call it, Ron, Charlie, those guys. Uh, you know you. Austin, yeah, we're we're gonna have a have a night or two free at Vegas. See if I can't uh, take some of the cash back home with me. So make sure you tune in next week. We'll give you an update whether I won or lost on the track, or won or lost in the casino, and uh, tune back in. We'll see y'all next Monday. <laughs>